and that whatever it's not like it will keep ratcheting up, ratcheting up, ratcheting up until you go out and do something. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling, although I've heard you talk about serial killers being addicted yeah. to porn. I have a feeling that that's correlation and not absolutely cause. not causation. Mm -hmm. You have somebody who is just, they are broken they from an empathy far. perspective. Yeah. And so the their response to porn would be very different. Complete objectification. Mm -hmm. This person is an inanimate object, mm -hmm. and that's why it plays out in their yeah. sadistic sex. Where Ted Bundy, who I have read about because yeah. he unfortunately lived where I grew up. No way. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I learned quite a bit about okay. him. And so that feels more like somebody, a thing in their brain is broken. I do. And, I do agree in that sense because in order to form an addiction to pornography, there has to be a level of emptiness and a, a brokenness in their soul to lead to that escapism, and then coupled, and then it might lead go on to other poor behaviors. So I don't think it's necessarily a cause. I think it's a pit stop on the destiny of becoming something evil, unfortunately. I but, don't know that uh, becoming evil. Yes, probably there probably is a path. But this is where I will say, if we're fifty percent. Um, hardwired yeah. and 50% the environment, environment that, man, I don't think you become Hitler or Ted Bundy unless the, part of the 50% that's hardwired is broken. Yeah, there must be broken. something prenatal in there. Yeah, because I, like, as somebody who's wired for empathy, like, I just can't fathom. Yeah. I can't fathom. Um, do you think yeah, empathy just... is the ingredient that's allowed you to be so monogamous and not be Ooh, tempted? Okay, so this I've thought a lot about. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you said to me, hey, she'll never find out. Yeah. Never ever. No pain. Yeah, no way. She is never going to know. Like yeah. this is guaranteed by God. Not going to happen. And She's never going to find doable out. doable in this day and age. Yes. Yeah. Would you cheat? Hell no. Mm -hmm. Okay, then why not? Yeah. I think there's two reasons. One, I am, my brain, literally, if you were to do a uh, biopsy of my brain, mm -hmm. I have a feeling you would find that I have massive amounts of receptors for vasopressin mm -hmm. and oxytocin. Mm -hmm. The the sense of intense bonding I get with my wife is Aww. fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I feel bad yeah. because that means I just have a leg up. Like yeah. part of why I've been me able too. to. I agree. I don't feel like it's any virtue in me. Mm -hmm. I think it's something just in me that makes it impossible for me to um, be simultaneously with two people. I don't think it's because I'm virtuous or moralistic. I think I just can't be with, I can't get pleasure from two people simultaneously. Well, now we're asking a different question <laughs> because if my wife was like, no, 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 be so hot, have sex with someone. Okay, word. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'll see you. Yeah, okay, then that is very different. But I would yeah. never want to be in a relationship right. with two people. Right, okay. But men really do have a pull for um, novel sexual encounters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially a novel sexual encounter with a woman who finds me attractive, mm. that would be rad. Right, like, okay. Super rad. Yeah. Now, the only reason I don't do that mm -hmm. is because my marriage is my highest priority because that gives me way more yeah. than a bunch of novel sexual experiences mm -hmm. would give me. But when I decide, decided to propose to Lisa one of the, I literally made a pros and cons mm -hmm. list and one of the cons was I'll never sleep with another woman again mm -hmm. and am I okay with that that was not an easy like yeah I'm okay with that I yeah. was like ooh and you were super young yeah, yeah. so that that the height was of your testosterone. that was a yeah. sacrifice mm -hmm. and so and that's part of why our marriage has lasted because I've thought a lot about what will make this marriage worth mm -hmm. that kind of sacrifice. So can I ask, like a lot of women come to me and I'm always a little bit done, and I've asked my partner this as well and he doesn't really give me much, but some women will come to me and say to me, like I've been, my husband just doesn't crave me anymore. He just doesn't mm. want to sleep with me. I think it's me, like I know all I ever see on movies and stuff is how the man always wants to have sex, but really I'm the one that's always initiating and I'm the one that has to do it. And I don't know what it is, why my husband just won't initiate or won't want to be with me sexually. What do you think? I always say that maybe you're not nurturing other needs of his outside of the sexual relationship. So I always wonder, I ask, have you cooked for him recently? Have you, that's their foreplay. Have you cooked for him? Have you made sure that his, you know, maybe his clothes are ready or whatever it is? Have you thought about his life before he has to think about it outside of the bedroom? That's usually my answer, but I could be wrong. So I was just wondering you what you- You could also be right. I could be. Like th <laughs> that, that to me is a huge part of it. Yeah. Um, also feeling emotionally connected yeah. and I, I really, really believe that men can be 
of course, were complicated and all of that. Mm -hmm. And the the wonderment of being in a long lasting marriage is to go way beyond the two things I'm about to say. Yeah. But honestly, honestly, if you don't get these two things right, you are dust. Right. You have to appreciate him and all the things that he does, like for real, for real. Yeah. And you need to exude that. Yeah. If you exude appreciation, you work so hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everything you do. You make all these sacrifices. You do yeah. it for the family. Because I can pretty much guarantee you that at least in the beginning, he did that. And yeah. the only reason he may no longer work with that in his mind is because you made him feel unappreciated. Yeah. And so if you appreciate him for that, huge, make him feel powerful. Right. Make him feel powerful. And what about oh, if he's is... not powerful? What if he's... Oh, God. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so now one of my questions I wrote down, okay. how do you tell your wife that she's gotten fat? <laughs> uh, so how do you tell your husband he's gotten weak? Yeah, I guess here's the thing. What, um, I think with both whether you tell your wife she's gotten fat or you tell your husband he, he's weak, instead of highlighting she's fat or he's weak, you highlight the time where they were the opposite. And you might say something like, um, do you remember the days we used to play rugby? Oh, you were so... You just came across so powerful. I, you, you should get back into that. You, I loved seeing you like that. Or it could be a, a thing like, oh, uh, babe, do you remember you in that red dress and stuff that day we met and stuff? Oh, you looked amazing. I, you looked amazing. It doesn't even have to be I want you back to that because some women are so hypersensitive. But um, the problem is when they don't tell her, they allow her to become a woman they're no longer attracted to. And you have to tell your wife. And I know I get a lot of like backlash because I, I get told I'm fat shaming. But here's the thing. In my experience, when you gain a lot of weight you start not liking yourself and when you don't like yourself you don't want to have sex with people you don't want your husband to see you naked you don't want him to touch you so you end up just being okay with having very minimal physical contact and then you drift apart whereas when you get when you keep on top of yourself you're looking forward to physically connecting so i think it's really important to keep on top of your body for uh, while you're married I, I know there's kids i know it's difficult but life is difficult you just have to eat less if you can't work out at least eat less yeah or so eating less, yes, unfortunately, is a reality, mm. but also what you eat is what extraordinarily eat. important. Are you careful with what you eat? I, I'm psychotic about this. So uh, <laughs> going back to part of the reason I want to do the show is to get yeah. people to understand you are having a biological experience.